typhoid clotted victims' blood and distended their stomachs. In the early 1900s, typhoid was still a fairly dangerous disease. The mortality rate was around 10%. Doctor introduced the first vaccine in 1896, which helped considerably for soldiers who were more likely to die from typhoid than combat, but it hadn't quite become widespread enough to be entirely effective for the masses. Typhoid sufferers start exhibiting symptoms between one and three weeks after infection, usually starting with a dangerously high fever along with nausea, vomiting, headaches, and muscle pain. Next, a distinctive rash appears on the chest. Without treatment, intestinal bleeding can occur. In the most dangerous cases, the abdomen will distend. She was America's first identified asymptomatic typhoid carrier. Malin was the first identified asymptomatic carrier of typhoid meaning she carried the disease without displaying any of the symptoms. This was a breakthrough discovery at the time, but unfortunately, no protocol existed to address such a problem. Health authorities did have the right to quarantine people who posed a risk to society health lives, however, even though authorities knew Malin was somehow the missing link in the typhoid outbreaks. They couldn't exactly prove how or why. Allen's anger and claims of a government conspiracy only worsened, already fraught situation. At certain times, the public even sided with Malin, however. Only in 2013 did Stanford researchers made a breakthrough, which they discovered how Malin was able to carry the bacteria yet not display symptoms. Simply explained, the salmonella bacteria behind typhoid can hide in immune cells known as macrophages and essentially hijack their metabolism in their favor. If the germs are successful in hacking the macrophages, then the person in this case, Mary Mellon, can spread the germ unknowingly while remaining healthy themselves. A sanitary engineer identified her as the carrier in 1906. In 1906, George Soper, a sanitary engineer for the New York Department of Health, was hired by a homeowner whose family had suffered a violent and inexplicable typhoid outbreak. His first instinct was to look to the servants and cooks. Specifically, he was curious about an Irish immigrant who had been hired as a cook for the family three weeks before the outbreak, the exact incubation period of the salmonella bacteria that causes typhoid. He conducted a background check on her work history and saw the trail of typhoid victims. Coupled with the culprit's rapid job and name changes, Soper knew he had found his carrier. Soper interviewed Malin and eventually suggested she could be the carrier causing the outbreaks. Malin staunchly denied his accusations. Authorities became involved before Malin could be restrained and formally tested for the bacteria. She didn't wash her hands while cooking. Health officials didn't expect to encounter typhoid in wealthy upper-middle-class families in New York, as it was typically associated with poverty and poor hygiene. Upon her first questionings from New York City health officials in 1907, Mellon admitted she didn't see the point in washing her hands. Germ theory was still fairly new, and she didn't seem to believe sickness could be transferred through physical contact or lack of proper washing. Her second quarantine was a life sentence. Malin was returned to North Brother Island in 1915, and New York public health officials decided she would remain under quarantine for the rest of her life. The newly dubbed Typhoid Mary had been called the most dangerous woman in America, and authorities agreed she could not be trusted to follow any sort of prevention in spreading typhoid. 
For her remaining 23 years of life, Mellon lived mostly in isolation on North Brother Island. In 1938, she supposedly died from pneumonia, though reports vary. By the time of her death, estimates contested that she had caused at least 51 cases of typhoid and three deaths. Mallon broke her promise and worked as a hospital cook, infecting 25 people. Mallon was released from her first quarantine under the condition that she wouldn't continue working as a cook. In 1910, she was released and began a job as a laundress. Mallon promptly disappeared from her washing position, however, and immediately began to serve families again. For five years, she managed to evade the authorities by constantly changing her name and regularly changing jobs. In 1915, an outbreak of 25 new typhoid cases occurred at Sloan Maternity Hospital in New York. Mallon was found working as a cook there, and she was promptly arrested and returned to quarantine. Doctors took over 160 samples from her without consent. By 1915, the now infamous typhoid Mary had been recaptured and placed under a lifelong quarantine back at North Brother Island. Perhaps it was her intransigence, or the fact that doctors truly didn't know how to handle a case like hers, but the health authorities treated Malin inhumanely. When she was first tested, doctors discovered her gallbladder was riddled with the salmonella bacteria, and they wanted to remove it. She refused the procedure during her first quarantine, but when they had Malin in her second custody, they made a second attempt. She managed to prevent the surgery, but she couldn't prevent the doctors from taking over 160 samples from her body during her remaining years there. She also suffered neglect at the quarantine facility. Malin was shown off to interns and journalists as a specimen. Her doctors limited her interactions greatly, only allowing her to wash bottles in the laboratory. She was forced into her first quarantine in 1907. After considerable resistance, Malin was finally taken into custody for stool, urine, and tissue samples. Doctors then confirmed she was indeed ripe with the typhoid bacteria, despite the fact he displayed zero symptoms and remained the epitome of good health. Public health officials deemed her a threat to society and decided she must be quarantined. Against her will, Malin was placed in a single occupancy cottage at the Riverside Hospital for Communicable Diseases on North Brother Island. Malin stated to reporters she felt she was being grossly mistreated like a leper and continuously insisted there was no way she had typhoid. She once chased a sanitary engineer with a meat cleaver. When Dr. George Soper, the sanitary engineer who identified Malin as the typhoid culprit, came to take samples in 1907, Malin outright refused. Allegedly, the cook grabbed a meat cleaver, alternatively a rolling pin or meat fork, and chased him out of her house. After several more attempts, authorities were able to pin down Malin. The last attempt ended in a three-hour chase. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.